the Egyptians themselves, those who dwell in the cultivated country, are the most careful of all men to preserve the memory of the past, and none of whom I have questioned have so many chronicles. I will now speak of the manner of life which they use. For three following days in every month they purge themselves, pursuing after health by means of emetics and drenches. For they think it is from the food which they eat that all sicknesses come to men. Even without this, the Egyptians are the healthiest of all men, next to the Libyans. The reason of which to my thinking is that the climate in all seasons is the same. For change is the great cause of men's falling sick, more especially changes of the seasons. They eat bread, making loaves, which they call celestis, of coarse grain. For wine, they use a drink made of barley, for they have no vines in their country. They eat fish uncooked, either dried in the sun or preserved with brine. Quails and ducks and small birds are salted and eaten raw. All other kinds of birds, as well as fish, are eaten, roast and boiled, except for those that the Egyptians hold sacred. At rich men's banquets after dinner, a man carries round a wooden image of a corpse in a coffin, painted and carved in exact imitation, a cubit or two cubits long. This he shows to each of the company, saying, Drink and make merry, but look on this, for such shalt thou be when thou art dead. Such is custom at their drinking bouts. Among other notable customs of theirs is this, that they have one song, the Linus song, which is sung in Phoenicia and Cyprus and elsewhere. Each nation has a name of its own for this, but it is the same song that the Greeks sing and call Linus, wherefore it is to me one of the many strange things in Egypt, whence the Egyptians got the name. Plainly, they have ever sung this song. The name for Linus in Egyptian is Maneros. The Egyptians told me that Maneros was the only son of their first king who died untimely, and this dirge was sung by the Egyptians in his honor, and this, they said, was the earliest and their only chant. There is a custom to which no Greeks, save the Lacedaemonians, have in common with the Egyptians. Younger men, when they meet their elders, turn aside and give place to them in the way, and rise from their seats when an older man approaches. But they have another custom which is nowhere known in Greece. Passers-by do not address each other, but salute by lowering the hand to the knee. They wear linen tunics with fringes hanging about the legs, called calisiris and loose white woolen mantles over these. But nothing of wool is brought into the temples or buried with them, that is forbidden. For neither may those initiated into these rites be buried in woolen wrappings. There is a sacred legend about this. I pass to other inventions of the Egyptians. They assign each month and each day to some god. They can tell what fortune and what end and what disposition a man shall have according to the day of his birth. This has given material to Greeks who deal in poetry. They have made themselves more omens than all other nations together. When an ominous thing happens, they take note of the outcome and write it down. And if something of like kind happens again, they think it will have a like result. As to the art of divination among them, it belongs to some of the gods, but to no one among men. There are in their country oracles of Heracles, Apollo, Athena, Artemis, Ares, and Zeus, and, which is the most honored of all, of Leto in the town of Buto. Nevertheless, they have diverse ways of divination, not one only.
The practice of medicine is so divided among them that each physician is a healer of one disease and no more. All the country is full of physicians, some of the eye, some of the teeth, some of what pertains to the belly, and some of the hidden diseases. They mourn and bury the dead as I will show. Whenever a man of note is lost to his house by death, all of the womankind of the house daub their faces or heads with mud, then with all the women of their kin they leave the corpse in the house and roam about the city lamenting, with their garments girt round them and their breasts showing. And the men too lament in their place with garments girt likewise. When this is done, they take the body to be embalmed. Thank you guys for listening. If you like the video, please subscribe to the channel and we'll be making more history leaks in the future. So, see you soon and take care.